Welcome back to my Learning CFOP Part 2. Today we're going to be looking at algorithms and finger tricks. Down this line here on the right are the PLLs that I was learning, and on the left of that are the OLLs that I was learning. I broke these down into smaller subgroups so that it was easier to focus on, and I tried to figure out how to pair them up so that I could learn the muscle memory of doing them as quickly as possible. I found that for most of these states, working from a solved cube, you could end up at one of the other algorithms at the end of that. So, for instance, starting with the soon from a solved cube leads you to the anti-soon. And so that was one that I started with right off the bat, partially because it was named and partially because uh, I knew that, or I figured out that this was the case. So I learned you know, how to do soon, which leads to anti-soon, and then I learned how to solve the anti-soon, which leads back to a solved cube. I have two cubes here so that I can show how that works. So I did the soon algorithm on the top and it led to anti-soon. And then I did anti-soon on the bottom, and that led to soon. So figuring that out, I was able to kind of drill these algorithms and be able to recognize the other case. Um, so here, you know, I'm doing anti-soon to get back to the solved cube as demonstration, and here I'm doing soon on the other cube to get back to a solved cube. There's another case of OLLs that work this way, and that is the T and L. So going from the T, you end up with L and vice versa, going from L, you end up on T. So these two were the first set that I decided to focus on because I was able to do that work of just kind of going through the motions of, okay, I'm learning these two and I'm able to just focus on that for a while. Similar to soon and anti-soon, the top one is T algorithm that leads to L and the bottom one's the L algorithm that leads to T. And then to solve the cube again, I do the inverse. The other algorithms for OLL do not quite work that way. And so that is pi, h, and u. These do not lead to a clean situation where you can just do another OLL to solve it. h leads to the h, when then you have to do the PLL h to solve it. u leads uh, to somewhere else and pi leads to somewhere else. So you have to know more than just a couple OLL algorithms to, to do that. In the description of this video, I'll write all of this stuff down so it's easy to reference if you too want to learn this. I mean, you don't just have to listen to me ramble about it. For the PLL steps, I broke this out into the two halves. So coming out of the OLL algorithms, you're either gonna have headlights or a diagonal situation and solving that leads to either the Z or H or the U for the last step of the PLL. Having come from the beginner method, I didn't learn the UA or UB algorithms, and instead I just stuck with solving those the beginner method way. Um, so that is something that I am still going to need to work on. I know that the U algorithms are faster, and I just need to go through the work of learning them. But these algorithms do lead to themselves. So doing headlights leads to headlights, diagonal leads to diagonal. And then you just have to do it again to solve the cube. Uh, same with Z and H. So doing the Z algorithm on a cube leads to the same algorithm to fix it. And doing the H leads to the H. This is handy because then you can just decide, okay, I'm just gonna focus on this part and you do H and you get H and you do H and it's solved. So you can just kind of do the, the motions over and over to kind of figure it out. I found that if I was not pausing between finishing it and starting it, my recognition was not getting better because it just became one long string instead of the same algorithm twice. So I wouldn't recommend just sitting there and doing like two H's really quick or two Z's really quick because you want your muscle memory to know the step of it from start to finish and not just like blurring it together into two steps. So while learning this stuff, you know, you have the OLL and the PLL and the way that I kind of chunked it up into sections was I said, okay, I'm gonna focus on two OLLs and two PLLs at once. And these are pretty easy to learn because I'm basically looking at four algorithms. If I do the OLLs, they lead to each other. 
and the PLLs lead to themselves. And as I had those down, I moved to the next set of OLLs that I had to learn and the next step of PLLs. And once I had those eight learned, I just had the three remaining algs that I had to pick up for the OLL step. So it was a good way to chunk that information up and get it somewhere where it was easy to learn. And what I would really recommend doing is when you're doing this, learn it with the finger tricks at the same time. I sort of did and sort of didn't, and so I have some bad habits that I'm trying to break. But here I'm demonstrating some of those finger tricks using your ring and pinky finger to do the Ds or your index and middle finger to do the F and B or U, and knowing how to just do the full half turn of the R and Ls. The one I'm struggling with the most is the M slice. I'm a little faster at it when I do it kind of the reverse, so I start with my ring and I move the, to my middle finger. Uh, I, it feels a little backwards, but because my middle finger is longer than my ring, it makes it a little bit easier when I'm hitting that middle. So at least that's how I am learning to solve it that way. I'm better with my left hand than my right currently, but as I'm learning the finger tricks and learning the OLL and the PLL steps, uh, it's coming together and my times are improving quite a bit. So let's jump to a session of five solves. I've sped up the scramble and inspection on these, but the actual solve time is slowed down to real time. So my target for this set was to get under 40 seconds, which if you have just come from my first learning CFOP video, you'll know I was more around a minute or over a minute. In the month and a half, basically, since I posted that video, through drilling algorithms, getting better at finger tricks, and just a lot of practice, I have almost halved my time. I don't expect to continue that trajectory, you know, I'm not gonna, in a month and a half, be 15 seconds or maybe even sub 20, but I have picked these things up pretty quickly, and I do think that focusing not just on the 3x3 three three has helped. So yes, I've practiced 3x3 three three a lot, it's probably where I've spent most of my time, but I also picked up Ortega on the 2x2, two two. I've been practicing a lot on the Mega Manx, I've been learning 4x4 which has the 3x3 step to finish the solve. And all of those things have improved my recognition on the 3x3, have improved my speed, and especially with Mega Minx have helped to improve my intuitive F2L step. Because the Mega Minx is just a huge F2L problem after you solve the first star. So you, you know, you serve that bottom white star and then it's a bunch of faces that you're having to do F2L on before you get to the last layer. So learning how to pair things up has really helped, uh, and I, I've seen benefits from that. It also has helped that it's other types and sizes of cubes to learn on and to get better at, and so I'm not just getting tired of drilling the same cube and the same algorithms over and over and over. Uh, so it's been a nice kind of mental break when I needed it, because I would be afraid that if I'm just focusing on one cube style, like just the 3x3, three three, that as my improvements slowed, I would get frustrated and instead of continuing practice, I would stop or skip a day or skip a session. And currently what I'm doing when I don't feel amped to do my 3x3 three three solves or practice is you know I go to the 2x2 two two Mega Manx or 4x4. Four four. I'm also learning things like the Pyraminx and Skube, uh, but the overlap between that and 3x3 three three is much less. They have some of the same algorithms, you know, on, this, on the Skube you're sledgehammering a lot, uh, same with Pyraminx, but you know, the getting better at those has not drastically affected my 3x3 three three solving, either in the positive or the negative. As you'll probably see here, all of these solves are using White Cross. Part of that was they were fairly nice White Cross solutions, uh, but I'm also not color neutral yet. So I'm learning Yellow Cross currently, because that way blue, orange, green, and red faces are still the F2L sides. You just have to think of them in opposite sides in relation to each other from the White Cross but I have not ventured into going further than that. So yellow cross is gonna be my next step so that I can solve two faces with the same speed. 
And once I kind of have that down, I want to venture into other color uh, starting faces and crosses. Uh, right now, my times on a yellow cross are probably around high 40s, low 50s, which is still better than I was a month ago on the cube just in general. But especially for a video like this, where I'm trying to get at least a fairly decent average for posterity, uh, I didn't want to chance it. And there we go. Uh, my goal was to hit a 40 second average and I just get it under with a 39.22 second average. So pretty happy with that. And thank you for tuning in and watching. I'll be back in a month or so to give you more updates on my progress with CFOP. And I hope that you are coming back for that. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for whenever I post new videos. Thanks, and happy cubing. Bye. Bye.